what's up YouTube I'm back um, I got a formula for you guys and it's gonna be pretty sweet get your calculators out get your pens get your papers pads whatever and you're gonna to want to hit the subscribe button because this is something that you're gonna to want to refer to in the future especially if you're in the middle of an engine build right now or if you're going to build an engine in the future what I'm going to show you is how to build a motor for your target horsepower so that when you put that motor together and you put the thing on the engine dyno it's going to make the type of power that you wanted it to make okay um there's a cool formula and this is new to me okay it's new it's going to be new to a lot of people it's going to be new to a lot of street racers um you know drag racers but when you have professional engine builders and i mean real racing engine builders this shit's nothing new to them okay um, they eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff. And I got this formula from Kevin Yates Racing Engines. And let me tell you what. I mean, that's what he does. That's all he does. Build, build hardcore motors. Okay, so shouts to Kevin Yates once again for this formula. He taught me this about a year and a half ago. But I'm going to go ahead and share it with you guys. Now, this is a very complex formula. Okay, this is not an easy. There's a lot of factors in it. Okay, but... The first and most important factor is your air quality. We need a we need a, a a number to represent the volume of air for your engine, okay? And the quality of air that you're going to have going through your engine. How you do that is you need to know your density altitude. You need to know your elevation, okay? I'm down there at sea level, so when I do when I test this formula and I've tested it, okay? I've actually taken a dyno sheet that I have out of the closet found an old dyno sheet thing was from like 2011 2012 and I plugged in everything that that dyno sheet told me and I wanted to see if it made the same amount to the wheels after you know a 20% drivetrain loss when I did this formula and I actually made I was two wheel horses off so just to give you an idea of how accurate this formula really is okay so now but we want to we want to start with our air quality okay so I'm at sea level or very close to it I use 14.7 for my air quality that's what I start with um, and I add my boost to it now when I add my boost I want to add the boost that's going into the cylinder that's very important I don't want to add the amount of boost that we're recording in the lower intake because that's not what's going into the cylinder now how to find out how much boost pressure is going into your cylinder what you do is you take the boost at the lower intake and you divide it by how many cylinders you have okay and when you're going to assume that going into each cylinder each time air goes into that cylinder that valve is relieving boost pressure that was keeping the boost in the lower intake and allowing it to go into the cylinder alright so you take your you take your boost that you see 12 pounds is what I had, okay, and that's dyno sheet confirmed. And uh, you divide it by how many cylinders you have. I got six cylinders, it's 12 pounds of boost. What that tells me is that each cylinder is responsible for backing up two pounds of boost to equal the 12 that we see recorded in the lower intake. Which means when a valve is open and that cylinder relieves its portion that it's backing up then there's only 10 pounds going in okay because that cylinder is no longer backing up its two pounds if that makes any sense okay now if you have a v8 you're going to take on 12 pounds of boost you're going to take your 12 and you're going to divide it by eight and you'll see that each cylinder is responsible for backing up one and a half pounds of boost and if you have a four cylinder you're going to take your 12 you're going to divide it by four and you're going to see that each cylinder is responsible for backing up three pounds of boost okay so that's how you're going to find out what you plug in for the equation so back to business we got 14.7 for my altitude then we also have 10 pounds for boost pressure going into the cylinder that brings us to 24.7 now I'm not going to announce the numbers anymore because we're going to start to multiply and the numbers are going to get really big really fast now we multiply by four different things. We multiply by our volumetric efficiency. We're going to multiply by our uh, cubic inches of displacement, the RPM that we're revving to, and our static compression. 
So we've got 24.7. I'm going to multiply that by 1 for 24.7. That's my volumetric efficiency. It's 100% because I've got a boosted motor. If I didn't have a boosted motor, what I'd do is I'd flow my cylinder heads to get a better idea of what the volumetric efficiency of that motor is because the cylinder heads are going to determine it. Okay, so you want to get an, an intake to exhaust ratio. All right, and uh, 76%, 75% intake to exhaust ratio is close to 90% volumetric efficiency. So that's just kind of a, a starting point there if you got a naturally aspirated motor. Now I also want to take that the number that I come up with, I want to multiply that again by my cubic inches of displacement. Well I have a 3800 V6 that's 231 cubes. Then I want to multiply that by 6000 because on my dyno sheet I only built power to 6000 RPM. Now, I could have revved to 6,500, but guess what? I started floating valves at 6,000, so I wouldn't have made any power. So when you plug in what you're revving to, you want to make sure that your valve train is up to the task of continuing to build power to that RPM. All right, then I take that number and I multiply it by my static compression ratio. This was an L26 block with milled heads for 9.73 to 1 compression. Now we start to divide. We get this huge number that we arrive at and we divide it by 5252. Why 5252? Because that's where horsepower and torque naturally cross in the power band if you look at a dyno sheet. So 5252, that's where the engine is in its natural personality. Right there at 5252. Then we're going to divide that number by 150.8. Why 150.8? Let me be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know. That's just the formula. It's what it is. So 150.8. And what that what that brought me to is 420 point something. 420 and some change. I said, damn, that's about that seems about right on the money. So I took that number and I multiplied it by 0.8 for a 20% drivetrain loss. Man, wouldn't you know I came to 336 horses? I made 338 horses on the dyno. So pretty cool, man. If you if you want to if you guys want to build a motor, use that formula. Plug in those numbers. Find out as much as you can about your altitude, your your, your air density at that altitude. Find out what you can about your your head flow and the volumetric efficiency of your motor. Plug those numbers in. Know your compression. Plug those numbers in. Know how high your valve train is going to allow you to build power to. And how high your block is going to allow you to rev to. And, find, and, and know before you build how much power you're going to make. Bully flow racing. Air in plus air out equals horsepower. Get on board. Get out of my way. Or get crushed. Deuces.